know who you are? Steven is my name. Even Steven. Will you say something, Steven? Steven or else media. You're listening to the Superman Super Show episode 19, Superman and the Numbers Racket. Hello and welcome to an all-new episode of the Superman Super Show. I'm a host. My name is Ed, and a thousand miles over there to my left is another host, Mr. Stephen Orr. Hiya! So this is the part where we normally banter for all of those uh, that are not in the yeah. know. I had, you know, I had some banter we've, we've prepared had some good for the last two episodes. For, uh, yeah, I mean, we've, Here, we've been bantering good. Uh, okay, okay. Here, here's what I'll here's what I'll say for our banter section since. Uh, we determined earlier on in the show, in an earlier episode, that one of the, 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 in the handbook to banter, one of the key subjects is weather. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, I, yeah. It has been so flippin' humid, flippin' humid. It's, it's been humid in Kansas the last couple of days. Yesterday, I posted a screenshot from my weather app that said it was 90 degrees, which isn't too awful. But because of the humidity, it felt like 102. Uh, that's awful. <laughs> that's, that's Today, it got up to 94, 95. But um, I never posted the screenshot, but I took a screenshot. And it, it, with the humidity, felt like 100 and I want to say 17. No, 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 no. That's, let yeah, me, no. That's... Let, me, let me look real quick. No, I, yeah, no, I guess I didn't take a screenshot. It was... It was in, it was over 110. I know that. Goodness and, gracious. uh, you step outside even for a moment and it's just sweat city. And you, all we have is this, uh, it's a nice window unit air conditioner, but right now we just have the one. And, uh, on days like this, that poor thing struggles so hard to keep up. <laughs> it's <laughs> screaming like a car yeah. in first gear going yeah. 80. Wow. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> you know, when they, I think the, the, the tweet I'd put up yesterday showing that screenshot, I said, when you hear people say it's not the heat, it's the humidity, this is exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Cause sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll oh, put a, a, a screenshot of my weather app up that'll say that it's 99 degrees, but it feels like a hundred. And a lot of reactions I get are, why do they even do that? What, it just, Put whatever, whatever it feels like, that's the temperature. And it's like, normally I would agree, but when it's like a, a 10, 15 degree difference because right. of the humidity. You, you need the lower number just for peace of mind. It, right. Just, yeah. Right. <laughs> but then you want the higher number so you can show people how much you're suffering. Right. <laughs> that's like in the winter, you know, wind chill. No, yep. I'm not outside in the wind, but it is still this other number in this house. Yep. So it's, it's <laughs> so yep. you need that other number. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Banner concluded. Chung, chung. I need to get that, that law and order sound. Just start putting it in there. Put, put it in. I have it ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. Today, we're looking at Superman and the Numbers Racket in Action Comics number 16. This was written for us by Jerry Siegel, penciled by Joe Schuster, and inked by Paul Cassidy. Action Comics number 16 is published by DC Comics and has a cover date of September 1939 with an approximate sale date of August 1, 1939, according to That's Mike, today. Amazing World of Comics. Uh, yes, it is. Hey. That's today as we're recording oh, this. There we go. Oh, that's pretty First, neat. We got Shark Week oh. done, and now we got uh, a, a a thing of the dates there, whatever word would work there. All right. In this issue here is what happened. Superman rescues a man from committing suicide, and the guy turns out to be a thief whose straight life has been completely ruined by his gambling. This motivates crusading journalist Clark Kent the next day to visit the police commissioner and urge him to act forcefully against the numbers racketeers and other gambling gangs that are preying on the city. But the commissioner just blows him off. Superman then goes to work, demolishing one illicit casino after another hospitalizing many low-level thugs, and directly threatening death to several gang bosses. One boss, 
calls him some help from his ally, the police commissioner, and what? Superman convincingly threatens both of them with death. They flee the city. Superman then convenes a meeting of all the gambling racketeers and compels, that's, yeah, compels each of them to draw a card. He announces that he will kill the holder of the Ace of Spades card unless he immediately leaves Metropolis. Now, that is he, the holder of the card, not he, Superman. Right. <laughs> Never to return. Superman has, of course, dealt every single one of them an Ace of Spades, and they all leave town very quickly. Oh, the irony. This, this had some of the most vicious Superman <laughs> we yeah. have had yet. Yeah. He was... The scene that sticks in my mind is the threatening of the punch the dude. And so he punches a hole in the wall on one side of his head, then yep. punches a hole in the wall on the other side of his head and says, okay, now the next one is going right through your head. <laughs> right. He threatens death, I think, more in this issue dude. than maybe he's done before in all the other issues combined. He's just telling mm. everybody he's going to kill him. What What is Siegel's deal with gambling? Oh, I mean, man. he just... He had it bad. This this was this was a biggie when he sat down to write this because now, he wrote this one hard. One thing that I I for some reason only just remembered about Siegel, I'm pretty sure it was Jerry Siegel. His his father was taken from him uh, during a crime. He, he he almost has half of a Batman's origin story. Um, so I'm sure that has an effect on him. Um, I think I brought up on a on a previous episode a book that Brad Meltzer had written mm -hmm. that uh, had to do with with um, you know it's a fiction book but it has to do it's it's almost like a uh, National Treasure or a Da Vinci Code but with comics and more specifically uh, Superman it's really it's freaking interesting he takes a lot of true actual facts and then weaves it into a, a, a thrilling adventure but. Um, I think one of the points that he makes in that book is uh, Jerry Siegel, as a as a teenager, maybe had his father gunned down and taken away from him, and so he creates uh, a superhero who is impervious to bullets. Okay, you know that that, that can't be a coincidence, you know. Uh, Doug, Superman, the Thug, N no doubt, man. How how many times in a movie or TV show have we seen somebody rise to power? By just being more thuggish than whoever yep. they're replacing, right? Yeah. I mean, the the one mob is taken over by another mob, or the you know the Haitians come in and they it, it's it's just like, well, at this point, if he chose to, thank you, Ma and Pa Kent, Superman could he would rule, yeah, and he has proven that he is like you know oh, it, it it would only take just this much for him to just say, look, n nobody is doing it right. But but I can, so yeah. I'm just going to do it right. It's it's like one of those those movies where you have the really the 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 antagonist and the protagonist. They're all mobsters or involved in crime in some fashion. But the ones you root for, they justify it by the you know they have a they have a certain code. They don't sell drugs. R right. They don't yeah. they don't hurt kids. You know, it's like it, you're still breaking the law, but since you're using your criminal know-how to take down the types of criminals who do sell drugs, who do hurt children, who do, you know, the, the, the bad crime. Like we do the good crime. We don't do the bad crime. And that's <laughs> we don't kinda, do that dope. We don't, yeah. we don't do girls. We don't do right. It's like, mm, no, what you do do is justification though. That's, right. <laughs> that's what it's, you do do. <laughs> that's, you know, that's what we got here. And I, 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 I was going to say, this is, we're back to another typical action comics Superman story. He, right. Yeah. He, he finds something in society that is that he feels is wrong and then tears it all down, you know, yep. just literally destroys it. You know, let's uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's take a look at uh, panel number six here, shall we, Stephen? OK, uh, the, the, the first gentleman that he encounters is attempting to commit suicide. He has a rope. He's anchored the rope to a tree limb upon which he is standing. He has set the other end of the rope, a noose, around his neck. And in order to hang himself, he has fallen off the limb forward. 
Now, if he survives the intense attack on the yam bag, he's going to be feeling quite a bit of pain by the time that the neck snaps. Can can I tell yeah. you? Because yeah. dude is going to be hurting yeah. because of the way he chose to do this. Yeah, That's the very first thing that caught me when I saw that panel. I'm like, how his his neck? Oh, wow. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah, eventually it'll it'll tighten around his neck, but yeah, yep. the, uh, the, yeah. the yam bag I think is going to suffer there uh, first. Yeah, and it's and almost like oh, this better work. <laughs> perhaps for my, yeah, yeah, that's um, so, and, and which is is funny because that you know that really has nothing to do with what they were trying to portray. Right. I'm, I'm you know I'm kind of being nitpicky, but it just it jumped out at me the way he was falling. I'm like, that's. Yeah, it'll work eventually. <laughs> but they do use the moment to observe that Superman runs faster than light. Yes. I think they mention Which, that either elsewhere in this story or in one of the previous stories. It would have to be this story because I don't remember him being able to move faster than the speed of light. It w- It is in this story. It's when he so, goes to one of the, the yeah. crime boss's house and the guy keeps trying to run out one of the doors. Uh, yeah, and he, and he, he gets the there room. first. Yeah. Yeah, which, which that that's that's an awesome scene. I can see that in my head. Yeah, that that is a perfect movie scene. Somebody yeah. trying to get away, yep. and he runs and blocks one door. Yeah, runs and blocks another door. But yeah, they even a, have the panel where you see the guy running, and there's wavy lines next to him that's supposed to represent <laughs> like the 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 disturbance of the air as Superman runs by him so fast. Yeah, yeah that was kind of neat. Yep. Um. Hmm. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not necessarily anything new that we've seen as far as how mm. Superman acts. Now, again, he he is quite a bit more violent in his threats. Yes, uh, in this issue, this this strip than he has probably in any other that we've seen so far. Yeah. I mean, he you know he's threatening to kill people. He there there are I, I don't have a particular panel, but those words come out of his mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More uh, than that, once that that he will kill them if they don't or yep. if they come back or if they, you know, so it's like it, it's it's coercion of the highest order, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so it, uh, and even before uh, when he has uh, like in the was it the um, ultra humanite one where he coerced a confession and then gave it to the authorities and yep. I'm thinking, you know, if they if they ever really investigate that, it, yeah, that's it not has to be thrown out. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. it's like, well, he told me to. What, what do you mean he told yeah. you to write this? He told well, me he'd kill me if I didn't. Yeah, write he, it. <laughs> yeah. He, he snapped my head off like a dandelion if I didn't. So, yeah, that's the the only thing I would say about this story that I think takes it to a, a level a little bit above something like Superman versus the reckless, you know, reckless drivers mm-hmm. is that. In the, in the reckless driver's story, he's just randomly going around and destroying, you know, first a car lot, then a car factory. And it's almost like he's just randomly choosing spots. Right. Whereas in this one, he, he goes to the gambling establishment first. Um, which was really funny because the other gamblers were really upset with him until he shows right. them that all the right. games are fixed and then they Why, help yeah. him to, the to destroy wins. it. But he he starts there and then he moves up each a level. So he goes from there to he gets the name of a guy who 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 runs the gambling establishments or whatever. So he goes to him next. And then from there, he learns the name of a guy who who's further up the chain. So at least in this one, while he may not have had a plan because he's he's super impulsive. um, Once he started, he formulated a plan and moved up the ladder. Right. Instead of just going around and randomly destroying things. And then, um, yeah, and then he does the whole thing with the, the deck of cards, tricking gamblers who all probably have uh, a fixed deck of cards on them. Right. Um, probably. The, yeah. The irony of that. Now, I only made two notes. OK. For this for this issue, because I mean, I, I, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't my favorite of the three. Um, I noted that in. In panel thirty, hanging from a ledge. Nope. Oh, okay. So there's a there's a hanging is from the ledge. Yep. Sure panel. enough, he is looking in the window. Okay. And then let me get to it. Panel. All right, everybody. Shh. 
there's be, be quiet. There's panelologists at work. Yes. Um, <laughs> I can see what I did there. Yeah. There okay. Panel 82. Uh, the note I wrote is just happy cops. Cause as he's destroying oh, oh. the gambling establishments throughout town, one of the, you know, one of the gambling, the folks that run one of these places calls the cops, help police. A lunatic is wrecking my place. And the cop says, ho, ho, it's a pleasure to hear those crooks scre- squeal. Three cheers for Superman. Which, which is ironic because in the very next panel, someone of the same ilk makes a call and says, you promised all yes. of us protection. Yep. You've got to keep your word. I'll expect you here in a few minutes. So it's like, yep. oh, so apparently this one was connected, but this one was not. It, yep. <laughs> and come the, to the, find the, out. The phone call essentially went to the same place, just different yeah. people. Yeah, just a different, <laughs> just a different office. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this, uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't. I, there, there were a couple of fun moments in it, but I wasn't as impressed. I was with the previous issue, the Superman on the high seas. This one, it's like we go two episodes back with um, Superman. And the the whole oh Superman meets Ultra Humanite, Ultra Humanite. Mm-hmm. with the exception of the Ultra Humanite coming back. Typical so mm-hmm. far, very typical action comic story. We go from there to this really awesome Superman fighting sharks and throwing submarines type and finding buried treasure and dressing up as a dead sailor to make people think he's a ghost. That was awesome. And then we go back to oh Superman doesn't like gambling because this guy. Well, Right, did commit suicide. He, Superman yeah. on a crusade to to to, to clean up uh, whatever yeah. it, it yeah. happens to be. And didn't he? Let's see. Did he threaten that guy? Yes. The the guy. I'm assuming it's the same guy that tried to hang himself. He he <clears throat> goes it goes to check in on him, and the guy is telling his wife he's he's done with gambling. He's not going to do it oh. anymore. Yeah. Superman falls follows him to a barber shop where the guy places a bet. And yeah, he threatens him. He goes, quick, hand me over your hand, hand over your watch. The guy says, a hold up, eh? Which is the second time that though that were that is said in this issue. A hold up, mm-hmm. eh? That's said earlier. And so he takes his watch and crushes it in his hand and he tells him, See how easily I crush your watch in my palm? If you don't quit gambling, I'll look you up and give your neck the same treatment. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> and um, then and then he goes from there into the barbershop, and that's where he he does what you were talking about, where he hits the, hit, puts his fist through the wall uh, yep, on one side the and then the other side. And then, yeah. still playing hard to scare. If you don't talk this time, I'll, I'll let drive straight at your face. So yeah, he's just threatening <laughs> to kill people all over the place in this. Wow, uh, in yep. this issue. Yeah, just do that. Just oh, yeah, that, I can't. that that was kidding. Yeah, um, he doesn't bark though, so I. That's true. You, I, you can't. Unfortunately, you won't be able to cut that out because yeah, that's so. okay. Um, just, yeah, I, I don't know. He, he just, <clears throat> when he goes on these crusades, it just, he seems to, I don't know. It, it, it's, it, it certainly is not the boy scout, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, he, he's doing mm-hmm. for the right reason. I, I, I don't question be- that at all. But because of that, anything he does is fair game. Right. He can do anything. And he's goes. doing it. The road to hell is paved well, with good intentions. You know? Not anything goes. We we truly haven't seen him outright kill anyone. True. Now we have seen him hit people. We have seen him throw them probably very far. <laughs> um, and he killed he killed those sharks in the last he, issue but by breaking their jaws. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pried their jaws apart, like you yep. would do a T Rex if you were yep. King Kong. That's right. You know. Um, but yeah, it, so it's you know that, and I mean. I certainly would understand you, you under any circumstances, you cannot show Superman killing someone, right. but if in Superman's action or Superman's in action, if someone were to expire, yeah. then I well, feel like, yeah. And I feel like that, you happened. know, they're, they're bad guys and they yeah. would have come to an end with or without super, you know, I mean, there's, yeah. I'm sure there's all these in, in the mind of the writer, these justifications, you know, yeah. now you take Superman and, you have somebody writing him in the late sixties, early seventies, not for DC, and he's just ripping these people apart. Uh, that's that's what the superhero comic books at times were like. Then you know, finally, yeah. somebody was given the freedom to just display what it would be like, and that's you yeah. know, and th- that goes all the way on down to today. I mean, you have uh, a television show where they 
pretty much that's the theme of the show called the yeah. boys. Uh, and yeah. I mean, that's, you know, so. Yeah. That's like, well, and like irredeemable. That's kind right. of the, the whole concept there. Yeah. That's Superman the, use. Yeah. The whole concept. What if he went yeah. bad? Yep. Um, noticed here at the very end, a, an ad for the world's fair comic, but it yeah. doesn't say if this is the first or the second. The no. first we've already had, and the second is coming up at the end of 39 or on into 1940. Uh, I'm not sure when that one comes out, but one of them is out, and so we don't know which this is. In the previous, which was Action Comics 15, there was an ad for Superman 1. Yep. Which it was gave the date. Three months. Three months after Superman 1 should have come out, so... Yeah, it, and in that ad, it says on sale May 18th. Yeah, so yeah. just uh, – th and that that pretty much uh, is the extent to any ads that they show yeah. uh, in this collection because they're a panel that finishes the page. Otherwise, I'm sure they wouldn't even yeah. show these ads. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they leave one panel at the end of every strip, and they put an ad there for something. Um, yep. Last – or let's see. No, it was Action Comics 14 that had the Superman ad in it because I believe 15 had a Batman ad. Batman and uh, who was the Comics. other one? Was it Our Man? No. Who is that? Here, let me look up. Sandman. Sandman, okay. Sandman and Batman, which Sandman is in Adventure Comics. Batman is in Detective Comics. We're reading Action Comics. So there's three different... Mm -hmm superhero -y monthly books all together right there. Yeah. And that's not, I'm, well, no, that may be all that they had right now. Well, maybe not. I'm not sure. I'd have to look and see. Uh, the middle of 1939, the summer of 1939. I'm not sure what other books they had um, that had, you know, who else would they have had? Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, um, some of those other books. I'm not sure if they're coming out yet or not. Anyways, so... Um, uh, nothing else for me for uh, for this story. Me neither. Uh, I'll say real quick before we wrap it up. When when next we get together, we'll be talking about Superman number two, and it looks like there might be at least three new stories in that. So depending on the length of those stories, that may be three episodes. So I, right, we'll, we'll we'll find out when we start talking about them. But that that could be the next making of is just Superman two. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this sucker up. Alrighty, we do want to thank everyone for listening to this episode of The Superman Super Show. If you want to drop us a line, ask us a question, or just provide feedback in general, you can send an email to the Superman Super Show at gmail.com. Also, you can reach us on Twitter over at Soups Super Show, S U P S, which I don't know why that's Soups. Wouldn't that be Sups? But, anyways. Mm. Or come join the fun over on the forums at forum.justanotherfanboy.com. Come on, guys. We, we want to try to get some interaction going there so that we can continue these things that we're talking about here, which I understand. Stephen and I are much more humorous like this than we are in prose. I, I, I get that. But we can bring some of that to the prose if you give us we a can chance. So, extend you know, the talk. Ab absolutely. That's what we're after. Yeah. Um, all the links for everything will be in the show notes. And uh, so everybody out there until next week, uh, folks, I'm Ed. That is Steven. And this was the Superman Super Show. Ciao. Bye. We want to thank you for listening to this episode of the Superman Super Show. Questions and comments can be directed to the Superman Super Show at gmail.com. If you enjoyed the show, you can help to boost our presence online by leaving a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. The Superman Super Show is a presentation of Stephen or Else Media. For more nerdy content just like this, check out StephenOrElse.com or just use the link in your show notes. Superman is a registered trademark of DC Comics and was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Superman's bad. I mean, he was bad. I uh, have to admit that sitting here for 
almost two hours. My posterior is starting to hurt. So lightweight. <laughs> yeah. Get it. Get it. I think it's more because I'm a heavyweight. Because you're not a lightweight. That's yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Doug, if you're still there, Chris, if you're still there, Terry, if you're still there, we will uh, catch you on the flip. The flippity flop.